So the preaching with a back to philosophy, back to spirituality, back to philosophy, it requires a lot of self intellectual interrogation. Hmm. It's completely different from sitting down to chant 108 rounds. Every time you have to be cracking your brain, to, you have to be innovative. Hmm. It's complete. I know a number of PhD holders in our movement, MBAs, uh, uh, DBAs, and even, I mean, a, a number of PhDs in psychology. But how do you use your academic acquisition? How do you bring in your spiritual ideologies into your presentation? That is a challenge. And not everyone is able to do that. Yes, Mara, that's true. At best, you can publish in your area to be able to get publications and get promotion and all this. Thing. But how do you bring the Bhakti philosophy? How do you switch in the Bhakti concepts and constructs into your presentation? That is a skill and competency that you need to be empowered to, to function with. You need to be uh, able to, uh, mm. to get, to, get uh, to, to acquire that information, perhaps through the mercy of your spiritual master, through the mercy. Because in my case, I was directly given an instruction to do this. Mm. So I don't see myself as being the doer. I see myself as being just an instrument in the hands of my spiritual master and the hands of Prabhupada. And if I tell you stories, some of the stories, you will laugh and laugh and almost roll down from your chair. I'll give you an example. I will, just, I, I give Marat, you an example. Minute, if you don't mind, I just wanted to go back to your three, three level analysis. So you said mm -hmm. uh, three levels of knowledge. First is like study of scripture, then connection. That's the theoretical, that's the theoretical understanding. Theoretical, then, then uh, correlation with contemporary issues. And then uh, application for solving application means solving problems sure how we can what can you offer as a solution to a problem yeah based on the theoretical based on the theories that you have learned in the Gita and okay. based on the commentaries of the Acharyas okay. integrating both the theories and the commentaries of the Acharyas how do you apply that to solving a problem in a real world situation yes. So then yes, I understand this. So then you said that, say, financial fraud, that's a problem in the real world. And yeah, then I'm, the, I'm just giving you yeah, well, that as an example. Yeah, so surely. And then, so the Hayato Visha and Punsa 6262 is the scriptural verse. And then the, so how you apply it is by talking about how contemplation, say, kindles greed, and then how it yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then what is the corrective measure or what is the solution in that? How would you present that? <laughs> I love you to love of course. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's intriguing because, I mean, your questions are very intriguing. They, 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 they give me a sense of humor and then, you know, opportunity to be able to explore more on, you know, the type of, uh, uh, you know, explorations that have been involved in over, over the years. So, yeah, Lord Krishna mentioned in those two verses how one gets into trouble. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Financial fraud is a crime. Mm. How do you become involved in a crime like financial, financial fraud? By Based on Krishna's ideology, based on Krishna's framework, by contemplating on yes, Mara, yes. financial fraud, how to get how to get money, quick, quick fix. Yes. By contemplating on that, you can develop attachment to it. Yeah, but what would be the solution <laughs> here then? And what would be the solution? Not contemplate? What would be the solution? Well, this, the, 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 it's already, it leads you to a problem. So you, are, you can either change your thought, your thought pattern, your, con, your object of contemplation is the major issue. What is your, tell me your object of contemplation and I will tell you where you are going, where it's going to land. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is that we have to have, you know, purified contemplations. 
association even mentally with the object of the senses could trigger situations where we will act against our better judgment. Therefore, we have to be careful about what we contemplate on. So you can wo use words like object, sense objects and everything in the academic world also? Yeah, but I don't use sense objects. I use, <laughs> I use, I use terms like uh, sensory modalities. Sensory modalities. Yes. That's clever. <laughs> <laughs>